my recording and close all my email stuff because it keeps popping up. Okay. Um, our topic guys, for the day is uh, overcome protection devices, <laughs> and in particular, in we talked about this topic guys before, but this one in particular circuit breakers. We're not going to talk too much about fuses. We're going to talk in particular circuit breakers. So what what I did guys is just because. Every time you talk about overcompetition devices, you have to mention the fuses because they're big boys. So I mentioned fuses. <clears throat> uh, Spencer, we know that. Fuses, you guys, if you go to 240.6, uh, all, for all these guys, if you go to 240.6, you find the standard sizes. The most common practical standard sizes in the power industry is 15 to 400, 4,000 amp. Both circuit breakers as well as fuses. Circuit breakers as well as fuses. Voltage-wise, the most common ones you're going to be using, guys, is a 600 volt rated fuses or circuit breakers. One view, fuses or circuit breakers. Uh, there's a few guys rated for 240 that we use for a smaller system, but for the most part, 480 system is going to be a 600 volt rated fuse or circuit breaker. And if you're lucky enough, uh, like some of us, and you work in higher voltages, they get they go through 5k rated. So if you have a system 4160, you're going to be installing a 5k. 5,000 volt rated circuit breaker or fuse, and if you are if you are uh, luckier, uh, you go to the next level, which is 15k, and it keeps going to 25k and 35k and so forth, guys. So the rate, the support circuit breakers and fuses by two things, major things: the voltage and the current. The voltage and the current. So that's what I thought to mention. Um, the third one is for, of course, the interrupting rating. Of the right the interrupting rating, as you guys know, you can buy interrupting rating circuit breaker or fuse from 5k kilo amp all the way to I think they can go to 400 kilo amp. And the same thing here, guys, you can buy from 5k kilo amp all the way to 400 kilo amp. Everybody knows what the interrupting rate is, what the ability of this fuse or circuit breaker to interrupt a short circuit or a ground fault. You can buy them from 5K, um, I believe 5K, these start, the circuit breakers start with 10, start with 10K. So from 5K to 400K and from 10K all the way to 400K, uh, interrupting rating. The higher the amp, the higher the voltage, the higher the interrupting rating, the more money you guys are going to spend and the more dangerous the equipment is, right? Everybody knows that a circuit breaker that's rated for a uh, 100 amp interrupting rating 15 kilo amp and the voltage is 15k it's going to be more expensive more dangerous than uh, than one that's rated for 600 100 amp 600 and 15k uh kilo amp any question guys about the rating first before, before this is really has nothing to do with the topic today other than just putting your focusing your um uh hopefully focusing you on the overcome fiction devices the topic is circuit breakers. We're going to slice the circuit breakers in a couple of, uh, of things. Any question guys about the rating first? If you guys go to the circuit breakers, I'm going to talk in particular about circuit breakers. So circuit breakers. Circuit breakers, guys, believe it or not, they are, they are four, three types. And you're going to hear the things that you probably never, uh, never, so types. The types of the circuit breaker, the first type, guys, they call them air, air, I know what to spell air, air circuit breaker, air circuit breaker. The second one is oil circuit breaker, and the third one, the third one is vacuum, vacuum circuit breaker these are the, the three major types guys of circuit breakers three major types of circuit breakers we'll go we'll talk about them in a few seconds here major types um so we have the air circuit breakers air circuit breakers uh why am i writing my table what's happening to my spelling this morning worse than ever huh air circuit breakers oil and vacuum and vacuum circuit breakers. Any question guys about these two? The, here's how they bred, why they call them this way. Very easy. An air circuit breaker guys interrupt, interrupt the, the, the circuit, short circuit or load in the air. 
So basically, there's nothing, no oil, no vacuum, nothing. It's, this is an air circuit breaker. All these things that you guys are looking at right here, they're called air circuit breakers. Inside them, there's air. When you interrupt, you interrupt, there's air. There's no oil and there is no vacuum. Okay, make sense? So they interrupt the short circuit or the, or the load in air. It will be molded and protected, but inside when the contacts, if you open it inside, guys, there's air there. It's not, it's not sealed and vacuumed. It's just air. Does that make sense? The air circuit breakers. The second one is called the oil circuit breaker. You know what they do? They use the oil circuit breaker using medium voltage. What they do is they put the contacts in oil. And when there is a short circuit, they open while being completely immersed in oil. And I'm going to tell you, anybody knows why do we care about putting them in oil? Every time you guys interrupt a short circuit, what happens every time you interrupt a short circuit? Arc, huge amount of arc. The higher the amp, the higher the voltage, the more dangerous and powerful and destructive is the arc is. So for low voltage guys, the arc is not that big of a deal. So we have an air, we can interrupt them in the air and we can control the arc. In a high voltage, in a high voltage, like we talk about 230 kilovolt oil circuit breakers, the amount of arcing is huge. So if you interrupt them in the air, it will basically ionize the air and make the air conductive and keep arcing, arcing, arcing before for a while until it breaks. Who cares about what if it arcs? If it arcs so much, guys, it will burn the contacts of the circuit breaker. So the smarter than Chad say, what if we put them in oil and interrupt in oil? So the oil will extinguish completely the arc as we interrupt the short circuit or a ground fault or a load. That's why they do it. Then a couple of other guys came and they became smart and say, what if we put it in a cylinder and we completely um, evacuate or move the air from the cylinder? So it becomes completely vacuum, no air. So we put these contacts guys, in a cylinder. The contacts are inside the cylinder, completely evacuated from air, no air in it, completely it's vacuum. And we interrupt. So when we interrupt, guys, there's no arc. Why there's no arc? Because if you don't have air, Brad, there's nothing to ionize to create the arc. The arc, the arc happens, guys, between things because the air at a certain voltage and a certain current get ionized and turn into conductive material. So as if you continued, continued the circuit, the contacts are that far away from each other, but they are connected through the air. So long story short, the smarter than Chad say, well, if we, if we get rid of all the air altogether inside the vacuum cylinder, then we can interrupt a huge amount of current, a huge amount of voltage without arc. Who cares, uh, um, DJ, about the arc? The, the problem with the arc, it, it kills and damages the contacts. If you keep, if every time you interrupt the short circuit, guys, or a load, just a load, if every time you interrupt it, a huge amount of current and a huge amount of voltage, if you, every time you interrupt it, you don't take care about the, the, the arc, you, you're going to be every, probably four or five times, you're going to go change your circuit breaker. That's bad news. So that's basically the idea. So air, oil, and vacuum related to interrupting the arc. Interrupting the arc. So arc interrupting. Interruption. As arc interruption, guys, the, the, more, the more you go down, this is better. Related to the arc interruption, the more down you go, meaning three is much better than number one in terms of arc interruption. Any question guys about this? Air circuit breakers, oil circuit breakers? So that's basically the, the it really is. Is it in oil? And the, you will never see bread, an oil circuit breaker in a 600 volt or less. Don't even think about it. You would never see a vacuum circuit. These two guys, Never ever dream of them in a high volt, in low voltage. These are, they start at 5 kV and higher. You wouldn't see them, these two particular, and this is also 5 kV and higher. Don't even think about it in, in lower than 600 volt or they don't make them. It's, it doesn't make sense. The arc is not that huge that, that needs this type of, uh, of circuit breakers. The air circuit breakers, guys, is the most common that most of you, 90% of you guys will be dealing with, with uh, air circuit breakers. Uh, air circuit breakers, they can make them um, in oil or in, in high voltage. When we, Brad, when we went to uh, EMI, did you guys see that big circuit breaker? That one that you can, you can slide in? That was an air circuit breaker. If you open it, there's nothing inside the oil or, or it's not vacuum tubes. 
It's an air circuit breakers. So the air circuit breakers can, you guys can be 600 volt, most of 600 volt, or they can be 5 kilovolt, 15 kilovolt. These are the most common, common for air, the most common voltages for air. You can get them at 600, 500, 15K. After 15K, my experience is you start getting um, into oil and, and vacuum circuit breakers because the amount of arc is huge. The amount of arc is huge. Amp-wise, they can go from, well, amp-wise, it uh, doesn't make sense to put a 15 amp oil circuit breakers. These are oil circuit breakers at their voltage start at 100 amps or higher. So any questions guys about uh, uh, air circuit breakers, oil, and vacuum circuit breakers? So but the, this classification is based on the way they interrupt the arc, arc interruption, which is the most dangerous, most damaging for the context of the circuit breakers. Any questions? So air, oil, or vacuum. The only difference is they have different, they, they interrupt it with the oil here, they interrupt with the vacuum because there's nothing to ionize here, so there's no arc. And here they're interrupting through the air. So there's some type of a, and if you guys look at the way they do it, I don't know if you noticed when we were uh, at EMI, they have the contacts and they have that tiny little that look like a sword sticks at the top. So there are two types of contacts. One of them guys, when they interrupt in air in high voltage, there are two contacts. So they go this way. How am I going to explain that one? So the first, the first you interrupt the major amount of current and you keep these contacts here to handle the, the, the arc. So these two contacts stay until the end to, to handle the arc. By doing it this way, they minimize the amount of arcing in the air. So the major contacts, you interrupt them, but you don't completely interrupt them. You continue with the minor contacts that's sticking up like they look like swords here. So we interrupt this first. Now there's no arcing because we're still connected, but slightly. And then they interrupt the second one. Long story short, by doing it, this, these arc, um, they have contacts to minimize the amount of arcing. You just need to know about this one when we specify it. Nine, as I said, 90% of the time, guys, you will be in air circuit breakers, 600 volt or less. Um, uh, so, any question guys, about this? The three classification based on arc interruption. Based on arc interruption. Uh, the air circuit breakers, they also have three classification for them, guys. They call them the first classification here. The air ones, only the air. They classify them as molded case. Molded case. You're looking at them right there, Spencer. These are called molded case. They mold them in a case. Molded case circuit breakers. The second one is you're looking at uh, low voltage power. Low voltage power. And this third one is, uh, I think they call them high or medium voltage. Medium voltage. Medium voltage power the difference is very clear guys if it's molded case circuit breakers you can get them they look exactly like these and you can get them up to probably 1200 amps molded case circuit breakers they look like this the bigger the amp the more they bulkier and they, you bolt them you completely bolt them to the buses that's what the molded case circuit breakers the way they mold, they mold them together in in, in these cases the low voltage circuit breaker, guys, you looked at the low voltage, like a 4,000 amp drought circuit breaker. That looks like a drawer, like this. So when you look at a power circuit breaker, you're looking at basically a foot by a foot by a foot box. That's all of it is a drought, or some of them are fixed. Circuit breakers, bigger, bulkier, more expensive. Does it make sense to use them on anything less than 1,000 amp? Medium voltage, the same thing. You guys were looking at medium voltage when we went to EMI. Did you see how big they are? They were, if you look at, if, if, if I remember right, it's like three feet by three feet, almost by three feet cube for the medium voltage. Or maybe a two and a half by two and a half by two and a half, the medium voltage. They're bigger, bulkier, uh, more robust. They can handle um, arc much better than the molded case circuit breakers. So any question guys about the way they construct them? Which one is the best, obviously? The power circuit breakers are the best, but better than uh, the molded case. But what's the problem with the power circuit breakers? They're spending. They're spending. So a molded case circuit breaker, I'm going to just throw a couple of, uh, I want to say from 15 amps, you're going to get them all the way probably to 1,200 amps. Make a lot of sense to use them, 1,200 <laughs> amps. Low voltage circuit breakers, guys, it make a lot of sense to start using them on, we use them on lower than that, but 1,000 amps. A lot of sense all the way, of course, to 4,000 amps. 
And the medium voltage circuit breakers, that's a whole different story. You can use them on, on a hundred, they, they usually don't use it, it stops the 100 amp all the way to again, 4,000 amp on the medium voltage. Medium voltage, the reason, the difference between medium voltage guys and high voltage is 5K, 15K versus the low voltage is 600 volt or less. That's what the low voltage in the power industry means, 600 volt or less. Any question guys about the, how the air circuit breakers, oil circuit breakers, vacuum circuit breakers? Any question about the CLAC classification, air, oil, and vacuum? You would never see a 600 volt oil circuit breaker. You wouldn't see them. The new trend, guys, in the industry is, is to use a vacuum cylinders in the medium voltage. Vacuum, they end up to arc really good. Any question about this classification because before we go to, this is how they build them. There's another classification, guys, how they interrupt the current. This is how they build, right? They put either air, well, the air is there, or oil or vacuum in it to interrupt the R. And when they build them, they either mold them in a case, like you're looking at it there, or power circuit breaker, which is basically a structure, a 3D structure, a big structure with steel. And if you open a circuit breaker, guys, the way they do the circuit breakers of power, they, you draw that circuit breaker, you put it on the bench, and you fix it. You change the contacts, you change everything on it. It's, it's a machine. It's like a machine. The circuit breaker itself needs maintenance. It's a machine. And, of course, the medium voltage is also, you can draw that thing, sit it on the table, and you work on it. Any question, guys, about these three classifications for circuit breakers? Which one is cheaper? Molded case circuit breakers. No, by, uh, by any means. It doesn't make sense to go power circuit breakers because any, anything up to 1,200 amps or so. Just continue with the uh, with uh, uh, multi case circuit breakers. Any question? The second thing I want to mention that comes with the, almost all the, they can come with almost all of them, guys, is the classification. Um, this is types based on the way they build them. This one is types, types based on interruption interruption mechanism how do they interrupt the current based on interruption mechanism how do they interrupt the current based on interruption mechanism guys they have they classified them this way they have uh, ther um, thermomagnetic you guys remember that thermomagnetic course circuit breaker and the second one is electronic electronic circuit breaker that's they classify them based on how do they interrupt how do they interrupt the current thermodynamic um brooks my friend has two components one thermal one magnetic thermal is literally if the current it takes care of the overall it's like overload it heats up slowly, slowly, gently, and when it heats up, it moves two contacts to open. That's for overload. That's a thermal component of it. The magnetic, they have a coil, guys, a tiny little coil. When there's a huge amount of current goes through the coil, which is short circuit, it creates a magnetic field, and there is a plunger that pushes the contacts apart. It opens two contacts to interrupt the short circuit. So that's basically what thermal, the thermal part, this Part, the thermal is overload part. The magnetic is short, um, short circuit, and also ground fault. Ground fault. That's it. Done. One act mechan the mechanism of, 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 of working, guys. Like that's why Spencer, if you go to a, a set of homes and you see, it, they'll tell you, well, I have a circuit breaker. When I reset it, it sits there for 15, 20 minutes, and then it drifts. Overload, you're overloading a circuit breaker. But if you if you turn it on, if it's up and you turn it on and trips immediately, the the magnetic component, that's a short circuit, for example. Can you guys see that? If you go to a place and they tell you, well, I have a circuit breaker, I reset it and sits there 15, 20, maybe an hour and trips. Um that's an overload. Because it, it, it heat, it heats up, moves to this similar like this amount of materials open. And uh, or uh, the way the way the mechanism they heat it and it pushes the contact to open. Any question, guys, about the thermomagnetic circuit breakers? 
more or less amp wise guys these are more or less and don't hold me on that one probably to, i always say 1200 amp more or less to 1200 amp thermomagnetic it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use them on anything higher than 400 amps thermomagnetic um so that's that's 15 all the way to 25 electronic circuit breakers you can get the electronic circuit breakers to trip I think they start them case wise from 800 amp all the way to, of course, 4000 amp and maybe 5000 amp you can get them. Any question? Oh, electronic. How does the electronic work? The electronic have a sensor, guys, a CT. This sees that if the current is supposed to be 10 amps, if it goes 15 amps, that's an overload, drips. If it goes 150 amps, it sends that there's 150 amps and it drips faster. An electronic current, like a donut, it, it looks at the current that's going through the phases. If it sees a, a, a huge amount of current, that's a short circuit when you program it. If it sees uh, like 25% more current, that's an overload. So it drips. So it senses the sensing mechanism as a, uh, um, a coil. It energizes the coil, and the sensing mechanism is basically a CT, a current transformer, sensing the current, feeding it into a coil with the circuit breakers. And if it goes higher, that like if you have 10 amps and it went, as I said, 15 amps of overload, it sends the signal to a coil. And from that coil, it puts voltage across the coil, basically. And the coil is rated for 120, puts 120 across the coil. What happens to you put one, plus 20 across the coil? It opens the, it's like a magnetic starter. It opens the circuit breaker. Any question, guys, about this? How it works, the electronic? So using CTs. CTs, current transformers, for both the overload and the short circuit and the ground fault, too. Any question, guys, about this? I'm not going to tell you that thermomagnetic circuit breakers are cheaper. That's why we use them here. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put 100 amp electronic circuit breaker here if they even make them uh, versus uh, molded case circuit breakers, very cheap. They work good, so they're good for smaller amps. Electronic circuit breakers, as I said, it makes a lot of sense to use them. Uh, they start, they call them the, the frame 800 amps and higher. 800 amps and higher. Can adjust the sensitivity. You, uh, thank you. We're coming to this one. You can adjust. Uh, the magnet adjustment, guys. Uh, thank you for bringing that one. I want to come to it in a second. Adjustment. How do you adjust this one? This is, I'm going to see, 100% adjustable. This is 100% adjustable. I'm going to show you what does it mean, 100% adjustable. You can adjust the um, pickup, long time, short time, delay, instantaneous. You'll see. 100% adjustable electronic circuit breaker for the most part. These guys, if I have to throw a number here, don't hold me accountable to them, I would say 25% adjustable. They still be adjustable, guys, a molded case circuit breaker with electronic. They have, it could be a molded case circuit breaker, thermomagnetic, and they can you can adjust the curves. 25% though, if you need 100% adjustment, moving the curves and, and coordination, you're gonna go to electronic circuit breaker. And you're gonna see how, uh, how how we how they do it in a second any question guys any question about the types of the circuit breakers the type of the interruption of a circuit breaker the second part guys is is coordination the second part is the over competition coordination we i will be giving you guys a part tools for window and you're going to be doing coordination no question asked but i want you to remember that these are when you're dealing with the um, when you're dealing with, please remember, when you're dealing with part tools for window, they're going to ask you, is it a thermomagnetic circuit breaker? Because when, they have a library, a big library, guys. And if the circuit, they're going to go, if you can't find your circuit breaker type under the thermomagnetic library, you have to go to the power circuit breakers or electronic circuit breakers. So they divide them be, between electronics, power, and thermomagnetic circuit breakers in the, in, in the library of that software. So be, please remember that one.
uh, electronic circuit breakers and thermomagnetic. Thermomagnetic. The second, the second part of this, guys, is overcurrent protection coordination. Overcurrent protection coordination. Um, you, as I said, overcurrent protection coordination. Here's a good example of overcurrent protection coordination, guys. I do have a 2000 amp main that feeds a 1000 amp use that feeds, um, let's just say over here, um, an air handling unit, air handling unit, and this air handling unit is actually, um, let's say, 150 amp circuit breaker feeding an air handling unit, right? That's typical. You have a main that's feeding um, another panel. These are all panels, guys. This one is, uh, is one panel, and this one here is another panel, right? One panel feeding another panel all the way to the loot. Very typical. Now, what happens if I have a short circuit right in this area here? If I have a short circuit in this area, you need the circuit breaker 150 to trip. If the 150 is lazy, malfunction, does it know how to trip? Does it want to trip? What's the second line of defense for you? The 1000. If the 1000 malfunction, lazy, does it want to trip? What's the third line of defense for you? Is the, three, the 2000 amp. And if that doesn't trip and all hell break loose and your building is caught fire and the utilities have their own fuse, my friend here, that they can, here is fuse, uh, um, oops, fuse here. They can fuse you. They can open that fuse and let your building burn to isolate you from the grid. Because remember, we're trying to minimize the damage. Your building is means nothing if we're to, dri if we're, if we're to trip the grid, the natural grid, right? So it starts by the load. The air handling unit, if it has a short circuit, I will sacrifice the air handling unit instead of sacrificing air handling unit one versus dropping the panel that has 15 air handling units, 15 chillers, 15 rooftop units. Would you do that? Would you drop that one to save all the others? Yes, that's what over competition coordination. Minimize the amount of damage and interruption with one device. If, the, as I said, if that guy doesn't work for whatever reason, now I start, I almost start arcing here. That will trip. If that doesn't trip, then the main will trip. And if that doesn't trip, the fuse of the utility on the line side will trip. Any question, guys, about that over competition coordination? The idea is to minimize the interruption and localize the fault. Minimize the interruption, localize the fault. Any question about this, guys? No. That's what they call it over competition coordination. Over competition coordination. Now, Spencer and Holly, my friend, you're going to be doing it for Chad. You're going to be coordinating between, let me show you, between this, we started right from number one, which is this fuse here, number two, the main, number three, and number four, number four. So a full coordination between these four guys, look how it looks, and I'm going to show you in a second how a full coordination between these two looks like. Very simple. I'm going to make it very simple. So if you, t if you take the first one, molded case circuit breaker, here's my first. So this is my uh, number four. Okay. Now if I need another coordination, what's the second one? Number three. My number three will come over here. Here's my number three. Spencer, do you see them touching each other? You see any touching? Are they touching each other? No. This is a full, complete coordination between number four and number three. Let's continue. Let's go to uh, let's go to another. There you go. Let's go to number two. There's another number two. Come over here. Number two, guys. Can you see that number two? There you go. Number. This is my number two. Anybody's touching the other? No. And the last one. Let's use uh, let's use blue again. For the last one, the last one is basically the main fuse, and here's my number, number one, number one, and don't forget that this is, this is current, this is I in amp, the current, and this is time, this is the time, second, and this is the current in amps, can you guys see that? 
So what you're looking at in this scenario, guys, the air handling unit number four, the air handling unit number four, if I have a short circuit, if you guys look at this, I'm going to grab a short circuit right, oh boy, right in this area here. A short circuit right in this area. So now I have this, suppose that short circuit was 15,000 amp. 15,000 amp short circuit. Look, look which one are you going to hit first? Which one are you going to hit? The, and the short circuit, by the way, is right in here. Here's my short circuit. So I'm going to hit first the number number four circuit breaker. So number four circuit breaker is going to trip. Try to trip. By the way, the, the reason why they have two curves and like they're fat like this, because that this one, the bottom one, is the time the circuit breaker is going to start the process of opening. The second one is the time the circuit breaker is going to completely open. So look at this. So I'm moving in here. Now I entered the point of tripping for the first circuit breaker. This baby should tri should trip me, which is this guy right here. Now suppose that this guy didn't trip you guys, and it will trip me within this amount of seconds here. This is a three cycles. It should trip me within three cycles. And Brad, three cycles are three divided by 60, that one twentieth of a second. Three cycles are three over tw 60 seconds, right? Um, in 60 hertz, 3 over uh, 60, that will get you 1 20th of a second. Should trip. Suppose that didn't trip. Then this, the current continues, guys. The current continues. Look what it's going to hit now. After that, now I'm getting into 2 seconds. From 3 cycles into 2 seconds, which one's going to trip? If it continues to 2 seconds, I'm just giving these numbers. Guys. Numbers could be different. If within 2 seconds, if that doesn't trip, then the second one, which is that guy, that fuse number three is going to trip. Suppose number three did not trip and the fault continues. We have a 15,000 amp fault we're cooking. We're basically arcing and sparking inside the, the air handling unit here. It continues going. That continues. We didn't interrupt. It goes all the way up, 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 up here. And this one here is going to trip at, say, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And... So after 30 seconds, if the arc continues, guys, this guy is going to trip. Does that make sense? And of course, if it continues, I didn't. I, I can extend this one all the way up. And if this if this doesn't, then the fuse of the utility will will see it after maybe two minutes. By that time, your building will be inflamed in fire. But they don't care. They just trip you to isolate you from the the grid, so you don't uh, you don't you don't bring the grid down. Any question, guys, about over current protection coordination? Really as easy as this. You guys are going to be playing with these curves in Power Tools for Windows. I just emailed them this morning to get us the authorization to use the software. I anticipate uh, Monday morning when you guys come, we'll do load the software in your machine, um, and off we go with the Power Tools for Windows. Please pay attention to what I'm doing, guys. This is X and Y axis. X axis is always the current in amps. Y axis is always the time in seconds or cycles, at the bottom is cycles. And you, your goal for coordination is to grab a curve that does not touch the other curve. That's what your goal of coordination. You don't need to touch. That's easier said than done, Brooke. Sometimes you have to sacrifice some coordination right here at the bottom, right here at the bottom. Then we see, then we see code guys right now require coordination in three places, emergency system, and hospital, hospitals, uh, essential system, emergency system, and also the CUP system, critical operation power system. That's like uh, federal government, uh, CIA offices, and all this good stuff, and, and federal bank. And so, does done is done with required by the NEC code to have over current protection coordination? No, they don't care. If if your main trip, so you they don't care. They care about the emergency system, guys, in hospitals and. If, if you have an emergency system here, if your emergency system is not a bug guy, bug guy, what are you going to do? Bug guys, if you trip, bug guy is there. Uh, if, your emergency, if you have an emergency system, as in a panel, you have to have an overcome coordination. Any question, guys, about this? Any question? Everybody can see the full coordination. Okay, so that's overcurrent protection coordination, my friends. There's a couple of things that you're going to buy. Spencer, there's a couple of things in circuit breakers you're going to buy. By the way, power circuit breakers are very, 
you can pull a lot of data from them. But there's there's a couple of things that's very important for circuit breakers. One one of them guys is it's called the ground fault. The ground fault. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna call them additive uh, additive to circuit breakers. You can add them. It's a function. Additive function to circuit breakers. Number one is ground fault protection. Protection. Ground fault protection. You're looking at it, guys, right here. It's a sensor that senses the current that's going in in the three phases and the one that's coming out on the neutral. If it if it doesn't balance, this means some phase somewhere is touching the ground. So you can see it's looking at the current going in and coming back at the neutral. If, if they don't add up to each other, if it's balanced, the neutral will be zero. If it's not balanced, the neutral will be the difference between them. Remember, you guys remember the square root of I squared plus I A squared or L1 squared plus L2 squared plus L3 squared. And the whole formula that we use to calculate that, it's doing it. The math is, do, is doing the math right in here. So there's a difference, guys. That sensor, CT, send the signal to the circuit breaker. They call it shunt trip. And there's a tiny little coil here and drops a little voltage across this coil. And guess what? This coil flips the circuit breaker open. That's ground fault protection. You have these guys on molded case circuit breakers and on power circuit breakers. These little ones, the ground fault protection is inside it. We don't care about it. This becomes a big deal if you have a thousand amp or more. By code, you have to have a ground fault protection. So when do you need the ground fault protection by code, my friend? You need it on any system that's 1000 amp at 480 slash 277 volt. That's the only place, or higher. I'm sorry, this should be or higher. So you need it on a thousand, anything a thousand amp or higher at 480. So Jim, my friend, anything lower than 480 volt, um, 277, you don't need it. If you guys have a 480 delta, do we need a ground fault on it? Delta doesn't have a neutral. No ground fault on a delta. You only required on a 1000 amp or higher 480 slash 277. If you also have 600 volt or less, 600 volt slash uh, three something, you can require it. But that's the most common voltage that you're going to be required. Anything less than 1000 amp is, is optional. Optional. This is a must by code. And they have the reference for you guys in the book too. Um, on the main, 230.95. The reference is 230.95. That would be the service. Your service disconnect means, um, and also the feeders, guys. If your feeders are 1,000 amp or higher, you, ha you have to have them at least on the main. At least on the main. If your main is 1,000 amp or higher. Feeders is optional. Except in hospitals. In hospitals, you guys have... You need by code to have two levels of ground fault protection in hospitals. Two levels. Okay, so that's a ground fault, the additive that you can add. The second additive <coughs> that you can add is called shunt, shunt trip. Shunt trip. Shunt trip, suppose, Brad, that I want to sit in California and I want to push a button in my laptop to turn a circuit breaker off. Can I do that? No problem. It's not a magnetic starter, guys. It's, it's basically you're acting, you're, you're making your circuit breaker act like a magnetic starter. So a shunt trip is a tiny little coil, a tiny little coil that comes with the circuit breaker and needs 120 volt, here's 120 volt here, source, and here's a contact here. See that contact? I can make that contact with the proper interface closed from a push button in my laptop. So if I push my button in my laptop, I close this. Now I brought 120 volt across a coil already designed with this circuit breaker. And guess what? We call it, call it shunt trip. Immediately when that coil energized, it flips the circuit breaker open. <clears throat> Why would you do something like this, guys? Why would you do something like this? A good application for shunt trip is like you're looking at it. A ground fault is a good application for shunt trip. You sense something coming in and you trip. Right? Um, what if you have um, a good application for it also if you're doing paralleling and so forth, and, and you want, say you have a generator, and the generator is not sized to pick up the whole building, it's only sized to pick up half of your building, and you want to run the other half on the generator. A good, 
a good application is to have shunt trip when you circuit breaker. So what do you do? You go, if you lose power, you start, you go and shunt trip all these circuit breakers, bam, 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 the ones that you don't want, turn them off electronically, not by hand, and then you energize the generator, the generator will pick up the leftover. Well, there's more to it than that, but that's kind of a good application. Every time you need to shut down the circuit breaker, um, uh, for example, guys, in the fire alarm system, a good example for this, if you have a fire alarm system, the fire alarm system have to have a, a co interface with the air handling unit. So if you have a fire alarm, a smoke inside your building, do you want your air handling unit to spread the smoke all over? So what they do, they have a shunt trip on the circuit breaker that's going to the fire alarm, the air handling unit. If it sense that there is, it has to be two devices detect smoke in the area, uh, instead of spreading the smoke, they close the contact, shunt trip this air, shut basically shut down the air handling unit. They can shut it down from the circuit breaker or from the controller too. Another application for this guys in data centers, when we're going to be in uh, next week, we're going to be going at Allianz. When we move to Allianz, when you guys walk into the data centers, pay attention to this, the side here, uh, right next to the, when you walk into the area that's full of racks of computers, there are mushroom head button, red box. These are um, power off buttons. These are D-Day, so the fire uh, firefighters walk in and there is fire raging in that corner. They're supposed to hit one, two, three, how many they have? right in one corner, shut down all the PDUs and the craft units for this data center, and then fight the fire. So that's code for data centers. You have to have mushroom head button, emergency mushroom head button. You push it, you shut down the PDUs that feeds all the servers in the area, as well as the crack units that cool the servers. Why? And you would never, you would hope you would never use it just in case there is a fire and the firefighters want to walk in and fight it. So that's, so now how do you do this? The question is how would you do, how would you push a button here and you trip the over temperature device for all the PDUs? That's it, you're looking at it. Here's the button that you guys pushed. You push the button right here, shunt trip. This circuit breaker will be specially designed shunt trip circuit breaker. You close it manually, shunt it, and you energize this one with 120. Could be any other volt, could be 24 volts. I'm just putting 120. You energize the coil, and the coil goes, has a, these are, these are like uh, relays, has a contact, you energize it, it pushes the contacts to open, pushes the contacts of this circuit breakers to open by mecha the mechanism they're, they're designed. Any question guys about the shunt trip? Shunt trip, good application <clears throat> for it is data centers and air handling unit for fire alarm system. Elevators, they shut down elevators, there's fire. How do they shut down elevators? Well, you can interface with the elevator controller, that's one way. Or you can do a shunt trip right on the elevator circuit breaker. If there's a fire, you send a signal to the circuit breaker and say shut down. Trip the circuit breaker off. The, the last additive, guys, that they use, not many people use it, we use it in a couple of applications, is motorized circuit breakers motorized circuit breaker. So these are, you push a button and there is a motor <laughs> and, and on a 2000 amp switch gear guys step and start closing the circuit breaker. It closes circuit breaker, it's really cool. So motorized circuit breakers, you push the button and you want to close the circuit breakers automatically instead of by hand. It, 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 it has mechanism and start tracking the circuit breaker all the way until it, it puts it in place. So closing the circuit breaker. Closing circuit breaker. Not or, or opening it, as a matter of fact, but for the most part, you use it to close the circuit breaker. Any questions, guys? Any questions? Any questions? All these parallel switch gears, they have some type of motorized circuit breakers or circuit breakers that you can latch them and close them and open them. Any question about circuit breakers and the additive that you can add to them? You can add more than that, guys. You, you have a couple of contacts. I can make it every time the circuit breaker open or close, it send the signal to my laptop. Like you guys have seen, remember how uh, they showed us on uh, Cummins field trip? When the circuit breaker trip, did you see how it turned, was it green and it turned into red? I think it was green, turned into red. Everything turned red when it energized right in front of you. How do you think they got that? There is a sensor. Sensor that senses took the signal from here. This is closed now. Power is coming. 
do a control system and it, it simulates it on the screen right in front of you, color-wise, color-wise simulation from green to red. And when it opens, you send another signal to simulate it as red, as green. Any question you guys about this? So that's how they did Cummins, all these coordination, and you guys were looking at the beautiful pictures that they did. That's exactly from um, shunt trips and ground faults and so forth and signals. Okay, so that's basically the circuit breakers. Uh, here's a heater, guys, just FYI. This is if the overload, if the current heats up, it expands and opens the circuit. That's the thermal part of it. Thermal part. Here's the magnetic part. Can you guys see the magnetic part? Here's a coil. If a huge amount of current from a short circuit comes in here, it creates a magnetic field that pushes this away and it opens the circuit. This is just the mechanism of thermomagnetic circuit breaker and the symbols that they use with them. Shunt trip, Brad, here you go. Here's your shunt trip. You have a thermostat. When the temperature goes higher than a certain time, instead of burning equipment, you can shut down the equipment. Thermostat controlling a circuit breaker. Very easy. When this is, when this, as you guys can see, when this flows, it's basically bringing a 120 volt across a coil. The coil physically, mechanically pushes these to open. Open them. Shunt trip. You're going to hear people talk about shunt trip circuit breakers. This is a, a good picture of shunt trip. Uh, contacts. When that circuit breaker guys are coming, what well, closed, you guys got, we got a red visual in the front of us. That's exactly what they did. When it closes, guys, it, it, when the circuit breaker closes, this one, this contact closed. So they took a signal all the way here, and there's a light. I'm just going to minimize it. And there's a voltage, 120 volt here. And they basically, can you guys see what? They put a 120 volt across the light. All right, we close this one. Now I have 120 volt across the light. What happened if you put a 120 volt across a light that's rated for 120? It goes on. Now every time the circuit breaker closes, I, I can see a light that goes on. It gets even nicer than that. I have another light, guys, that every time the circuit breaker closes, it opens. Look at this one here. You tie it this way, you guys look now. Every time the circuit breaker, this light is always on until the circuit breaker closes, and this then this contact will open. And so I have one light that goes on. I could have one light that goes on when the circuit breaker is, is closed, and another light that goes on. Basically, this light will one of them will say on and the other one will say off. So this is I can make this light say on and this one will say off. You've got yourself a visual indication that the circuit breaker is open or closed. So the control, guys, the control part of circuit breaker's power is unlimited. It really is. You can you can do a whole lot of it. So arcing, we talked to guys about arcing. Arcing is the most damaging thing. And we talked about how to we went from air into oil into vacuum that's just because we end up look how when you open the the current right in here if um, suppose that i have a twenty thousand amp going in here this will ionize the air and this will continue conduct current guys and creating arc who cares if you keep if you keep doing arc guys here these contacts here will will be completely damaged and of course, whatever the arc is doing here, it's going to be burning buses and burning a lot of other stuff. Arc is a bad news, guys. You don't want it, especially inside the switch gear. If you go to YouTube and 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 do arc uh, arc flash, there's a lot of really nice nice uh, visuals of for high voltage opening, closing, sectionalizers, and breakers, and see how the arc goes. You can minimize. There's a lot of methods, guys, of minimizing the circuit breakers all the way back to the vacuum and, and, and so forth. There's your vacuum cylinder. You can interrupt everything in vacuum so you don't ionize anything. Cool. What's the problem is? Expensive. Okay. Um, here's the care of guys that we were just talking about. Starting next week when we put portals for window in your machine, you're going to be looking basically what are, what are these curves in your machine. 
you're going to develop the one line diagram for this project that you guys have inside the part useful window you would be uh, they call it modeling so if you you start by uh, grabbing a transformer just mod with transformer a cable to a, to an over competition device to a bus which is a switch gear to another over competition device to a mechanical panel electrical lighting panel and so forth so you model it after you model it guys we run a short circuit analysis on it and we go do the coordination. Here is a, a typical molded case circuit breaker thermo. This is a molded case uh, thermomagnetic circuit breaker current characteristic curve for. Uh, I can't remember what's the M on it. So one of these um, uh, uh, thousand amp uh, long time pickup be set at a thousand amp. It's a thousand amp molded case circuit breaker set at a thousand amp. <clears throat> So I want to bring to your attention, guys, I will explain it in a second here. Um, so the most important thing about this is the current, the more you go here, higher, this way is higher current, higher amp. If the more you go up here is higher what? Higher time or longer, longer, longer. So if you guys are looking at this, just this here, this means anything in this area, no problem, safe, 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 safe. All this area here, I am I'm completely safe. Any short circuit, any ground fault, anything in this area, I can handle it based on the circuit breaker. Anything on this area here is this area here, based on this circuit breaker, it's not protected. Anything in this area, I need another circuit breaker after that boy to protect it. So if I have a short circuit right now, this is my circuit breaker. If I have a short circuit right here, and the value is actually right in this area, this means your circuit breaker will explode. Literally. If you have a short circuit right here, you're going to explode. If you have a short circuit right here, it will open. Here it will open. Here it will open. Anywhere here, it will open. If you have a overload, this area here is overload. If you go down to this area here, that's the overload area. So, well, this is the area, the normal area. But if you go down slightly here, this is where the, you can overload your uh, your 1,000 amp, like 1,500 amp. It will sit there for two minutes, trips. So, and then from here down, the ground fault in the short circuit, right here. And I'll show you guys when we do the curves, the difference between the difference between overload, ground fault, and short circuit is the amount of current. If the amount of current is smaller, it's an overload. If it's higher, ground fault. If it's extremely high, it's a short circuit. It really is. As far as the circuit breaker looking at it, it doesn't know it's overloaded. It's just looking at the current. Any question about this? How about if I give you guys a break and I have to highlight two other things in that chapter? Let's take five minutes break. You guys have you guys for a second here you guys are looking at an adjustable electronic circuit breaker curve that's what you guys are going to be doing with the part tools for window they call them adjustable circuit breaker curve every color is an adjustable individually adjust can be individually adjusted so this is the current characteristic curve for a 4000 amps with 4000 amp electronic circuit breaker 4000 amp electronic circuit breaker um adjustable i want to bring to your attention dj that this side here is the current this side guys here is the time if you look at the first the blue the first blue part guys is long time pickup this means i can run with this switch gear up to 4000 amp forever 4000 amp because it's rated for it i can run forever that red one guys it's called long time delay long time delay if i have an overload if I have an overload in my system, I can delay the trip of the circuit breaker a certain amount of time. I can delay it up to here 40 seconds. The second one, guys, is called short time pickup, the green one, short time pickup. Short time delay, you can delay it like the ground fault is a short time pickup and delay it. And that, that boot here, this is the D-Day that you would want to be there. This is a short circuit. Start example, 5K. 20k all the way to 65k so this circuit breaker can handle up to 65,000 amp <clears throat> mr rabab if you put a 90 
five or 90,000 amp in this area, this circuit breaker will explode. It's not rated for it. So the way this works, guys, suppose I have, and, um, and this is what the one line diagram will look like. Here's my 4,000 amp, 65 kilo amp, 480 volt. That's what basically, that's exactly what you guys are doing on your system. So I have, um, so my long time pickup, I can adjust, you can adjust, and you're gonna see guys, you can adjust these um, from, oops, I can adjust my pickup. I can adjust it from 0.1 all the way to one. Uh, time delay, I don't know, I can adjust it a fraction seconds. Um, this is in seconds, so let's say from one second to 10 seconds. Um, short time pickup, short time pickup guys, you can adjust it from 0.1 to one percentage, say one second to uh, 10 seconds to a disk component and instantaneous, instantaneous is always three cycles. We have to trip within three cycles at the instantaneous. Here's an example. If I have a short circuit right in here, it keeps going. I started the mechanism, and within three cycles, I have to trip. If I don't trip, guys, within three cycles, your buses, if, not, if it's not an ANSI switch gear, you have just burned your equipment. You have just burned your equipment. When you guys take this one with, PT, with us, with PTW, you're going to be adjusting them. How, what does it mean adjusting? Visually, you're going to grab this piece and move it this way lower or this way higher. This one goes the same thing. This is longer. This is longer time, shorter time. This one, more current, less current. Shorter, uh, shorter time, more time. Uh, more current, less current. That's what we're doing. We're adjusting them. That's when they say, guys, when you see adjustment, uh, we have that one here. You basically will be adjusting these this way. These will be adjusted this way. These will be moving physically, mechanically, moving it in the curve. And this one will be moving this way. And also, some we move them up and down. That's what adjusting circuit breaker is. And what does that mean in reality? You grab a screwdriver and you go to the piece of the screw, the, 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 the um, circuit breaker, and you adjust it to move it up or down. You would hope you know what you're doing, but that's basically. This is full spiel adjustable electronic circuit breaker. You can adjust, that's why I said 100% adjustable. You can adjust every component of it. Molded case circuit breakers, I told you guys, 25% adjustable. You can adjust them one or two components. Here, if you look, I have one, two, three, four, five components I can adjust. Five components in an, in an adjustable circuit breaker. Who cares? Who cares? You guys remember how we said that they're, if, if they don't, overlap each other, I have a good coordination. What if, what if this component was overlapping with another component? I just move that component to the other side, right? So it helps you, uh, it helps you achieve 100% coordination. It helps you achieve 100% coordination. So keep this in mind, please, as we go through the software next week, uh, you're gonna be looking in the software at a colorful curve like this. Um, and you're gonna, get, this is just for the 4,000 amp. I don't want to complicate it, and what if you have, guys, here's my 2,000 amp switch going down to a switchboard here. Then you will have another curve. You will have another curve. I'm just going to draw the curve but not do anything more in it. So you, you would have another curve that looks like this, looks like this, component like this. Can you see that? This. And the legs, you would hope that it sits right there. Spencer, I have 100% coordination between these two pairs now. It's nested underneath it. That will be my 2000 amp. As you guys know, based on this, this, this one is my 4000 amp. This baby here is my uh, 2000 amp. Full coordination, full coordination. It's hard to get sometimes, especially guys here in the D-Day. This, the bottom is the most dangerous area. Any question, guys? Any question? If you guys want to move in the design, in the design at least part, this will get you to the next level. It really is. 
a lot of engineers don't allow a lot of designers to touch it, but that could basically increase your value to the company. You know how to do CAD, you know how to do Revit, you know how to do this, and you know how to analyze the system. So it's a, it's a step, uh, one step above. If you want to go that far, if you don't want to go that far, do the drafting for chat and move on. A lot of people will be more than happy guys to do that one for you. Any questions? Much easier than you think it is, guys. It's if, if you, but please understand wherever you go, whichever software you use, you're gonna be looking at LTPU. If you don't know what LTPU is, you're not gonna be able to pick it up. It's long time pickup. That's basically how 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 you're gonna sit the circuit breaker at 4,000 amp in size that uses at uh, uh, cables. A long time delay, short time pickup, short time delay, and instantaneous. The delay is time. The pickup is amps always. Pick up in amps, delay is. Um, so, Spencer, if I set the long time pickup at point 0.1 and my circuit breaker is 4000 amp, I have just changed this circuit breaker from 4000 amp into 400 amp. Just by tweaking, tweaking it to point 0.1. See how powerful that is? So, what did you do in reality? You grab this curve here and you moved it all the way up to here. You made a 4000 amp, guys, a 400 amp, just by sitting the long time pickup dial to 0.1. And the code allows you to size the cables now for a 400 amp instead of a 4000 amp. That's how powerful this setup is. The code allows you, if I, if I have a 4,000 amp circuit breaker here, and I go dial it down to 0.1, if this 4,000 amp circuit breaker becomes a 400 amp, because 0.1 times 4,000, right, is 400, so I can size my cables coming right now to the system based on um, on 400. So it, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Okay, Chad. We believe you. Any questions, guys, about this? Please, I want I want to bring to you, this to your attention because when we go to the software, if you don't understand these, you look at these curves and what the heck is this? Very easy. The if the top always the circuit breaker, the top guys always going to be on the right side. The bottom ones all going always the most bottom ones or the closest to the load is going to be on the left side. So you start with the closest to the load left side and you keep going. So you start from the bottom and you keep going up all the way to the utility. And you can go all the way to the national grid too, transmission lines and so forth. But we stop at the utility port. Any question guys about long time pickup, short time pickup, long time delay, short time delay, and instantaneous? The three cycles that I highlight here, guys, this circuit breaker is rated by ANSI by uh, UL to trip at three cycles. If it doesn't trip within three cycles, the equipment that this is supposed to protect will burn. It just burn. So that three cycles, unless the equipment is rated for other than three cycles, which is only one equipment is rated, NC switch gear. NC, they call it NC switch gear. Which you're talking about 4,000 amp. So, okay. So moving with this, my friends, to a couple of coordination. Okay, now you guys understand what understand what this component is. Spencer, this is a molded gear circuit breaker, and that boy, the only thing you can adjust most of the time is this part. That will be the long time pick up. And this part is in. Instantaneous. Can you guys see why I told you that a molded gear circuit breaker is 25% adjustable, some of them? You only can adjust the top is only adjustable for some of them, not all of them even. Long time pickup and the bottom is instantaneous. Some of them you don't even adjust, you can't adjust anything. These ones, unadjust, do you see any screws right here? Anything, any dials that you can dial up and down? No. So that's basically, uh, the model case. I'll show you a couple of really nice curves. Okay. Um, Adjusting. Here's an adjustment, guys, where the instantaneous, you guys remember this piece was an instantaneous piece. I moved it up. I moved it up from six cycles to 30 cycles. 
That's what adjustment means. I moved it up. It was here. I moved it up. What does that mean? Meaning, if I have a short circuit, it will sit in the switch gear for 30 cycles. 30 cycles, guys, are 30 divided by 60, half a second. Half a second is eternity. If your equipment is not rated ANSI switch gear, 30 cycle switch gear, it will burn your equipment. If you sit this equipment 30 cycles and allow the short circuit to sit here for 30 cycles, half a second, you just have burned this piece of equipment and everything inside it. So that's what adjustment is. Can you guys see how we're adjusting? Going up, moving it, delaying it slightly. Uh, this curve is really interesting because, guys, to interrupt the circuit, you need three cycles. Look at cycle number one, guys. One is one cycle. Two, two cycle. Three. And you must interrupt. Most of the equipment are rated only to handle three cycles in a short circuit. One cycle, two cycle, three cycles, interrupt. If you don't interrupt within three cycles, you burn the equipment. Unlisted ANSI, U, UL, ANSI listed switch gear, which they put in 30 cycles. And what's a cycle? When you guys see a cycle, three cycles divided by 60 equal, three divided by 60 equal 1 20th of a second. If it's, uh, if it's 30 cycles divided by 60, that will get you half a second. ANSI switch gear only. ANSI switch gear only. That you put half a second. Everything else have to trip within three cycles. Within three cycles. Within. Can I trip it within half a cycle? No problem. No more than three cycles. No more than three cycles. That's why a lot of people guys like fuses, fast acting fuses. A fast acting fuses can trip you right in here within half a cycle. Who cares? Who cares about cycle? Why can't I trip within 15 cycles? The more cycles, the more time, the more heat and magnetic force you have in your equipment, the more damage, physical and burning damage and, uh, and blackening of your equipment you're going to have. And they show you when it starts unlatching. The circuit breaker starts unlatching. Try to open at this point. By the time it reaches this point, it's completely open. So it takes time for the mechanic, the physics, the mechanical to open. So that's my cycles. If you guys move, move. Here's a fuse. The fuses are the most, the 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 hardest guys to coordinate. A fuse will look something like this one. A uh, fuse, you can't coordinate a fuse. Uh, you can't adjust a fuse. Non-adjustable. That's the disadvantage of a fuse. Non-adjustable. Meaning, Brooks, can I move that link up a little bit? No. Can I move that one this side? No. Can I move it, shift everything to the other side? Yes. That's meaning a new fuse. You just bought yourself a new fuse. If you shift the whole curve, uh, if you shift it this way, smaller fuse, this way, uh, a bigger fuse. So fuses are non-adjustable for the most part. The other one, guys, is a ground fault. Um, if you guys remember, we talked about ground fault requires on systems. Ground fault requires on system 1000 amp, uh, 480 volt slash 277 volt. That's basically for the most part what you're going to do it. So I set my ground fault right in here. And I can adjust it though. So I can adjust this one. I can move it up, delay it. Or down, fast. Up, delay it. Down, fast. That's how they adjust the ground fault. Meaning if I have a ground fault, there's a 900 amp ground fault. 900 amp ground fault on... Um, on a 4,000 amp switch gear. Do I want to trip immediately or should I? This is this is a tripping within 0.5 of a second. This is tripping within 0.1 of a second. 0.1 of a second. The ground fault is small, so you can you can delay it more. So adjusting a ground fault. And by the way, we, we call it ground fault because it's only looking at the ground fault. It doesn't see the short circuit. 
The short circuit will be seen by the circuit breaker. The ground fault is just a function. They're only looking at the ground fault. And why do you why do you guys think that they use it on the high high amps? Because if they have a 4,000 amp switch gear here and a 4,000 amp circuit breaker, and down here, if you have a 400 amp ground fault, which you could be 400 amp ground fault, that 4,000 amp would never be able to see it. So this will sit arc and spark and escalate to a short circuit before that guy wakes up. That's why they have a ground fault because it's too big. It just doesn't see little things. So the smart man and Chad discovered if it's more than 1,000 amps, we need to be able to see that tiny little amp that's a ground fault here before it escalates into fire. So they can't see it by the circuit breaker. So they added a sensor to the circuit breaker to look only at the ground fault. Only at the ground fault. So that's my ground fault. Okay, um, looking at this, guys, can you just by looking at it, can you tell me where these two curves are not coordinating? Are they fully coordinated first? No, just visually. That's what's nice about the software, guys. Visually, I can tell you, wherever they overlap, I have a problem right here. This is my problem. What does that mean? Let me tell you what a problem means. It means if I have a short circuit right in this level, it keeps going, 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 going here, and... Because they overlap, they will trip, both of them will trip. The mean, A, and the feeder, B, will trip at the same time. Bad news, bad news. So that's bad coordination. Where else can you guys see that this also here is a bad news, miscoordination here? Miscoordination. If I also have a short circuit right here, the two circuit picker will trip. Bad news. Most of the time, guys, this leg here, just FYI, this is kind of an acceptable, acceptable um, miscoordination. It's an acceptable miscoordination. Acceptable miscoordination because we can't coordinate too much here unless you have a switch gear. This one is not acceptable. You you can move them away from each other. Everybody can see, guys, that these are could. So how do I do to coordinate this, guys? I can move this leg up slightly so they don't touch each other. And I'm making it easy. The IEEE guys have the exact amount of time. They have a certain amount of time that you have to keep maintained between them to have a full coordination. But as far as you guys are concerned is if they don't touch each other, 99% of the time you're okay. As long as they don't touch each other. Visually. If they don't touch each other, you have a, like here. Look at this. Perfect coordination. Any question, guys, about the coordination? So are these fully coordinated with each other? No. Are they coordinated? Yes. There's certain time, certain time, certain application, they don't coordinate. What's the likelihood that you guys will have a short circuit right here that they don't coordinate? Let me tell you a, a secret. Your chances, you guys drove all to done with you today, right? Your chances of you could have gotten into an accident and die from this accident is probably a hundred times more than this scenario happening. But you still as a designer have to account for it. So sometimes the owner you talk to the owner and say this is a risk I can handle. Look at this. Can you guys tell me that this is fully coordinated? Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. I have three circuit breakers that are completely, completely coordinated. Look at this C. Can you guys see? I have my C. I have, uh, which is in this case C here. And I have my B, which is B here. And I have my A, the main, which is right here. Can you guys see? Is there, are they touching? Coordination means are they touching each other in any way, shape, or form at any point in, the, in this horizon? No. Fully coordinated. This is what we call it 100 percent coordination coordination or fully fully coordinated overcurrent protection devices fully coordinated overcurrent protection device fully coordinated if i have a short circuit anywhere jim anywhere in this system i guaranteed that the 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 the, the guy closer to the short circuit will handle it 
And if you guys want to take an example right here, if I have a short circuit right here, bam, 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 oops, now this will take care of it unless it malfunctions. It will take care of it. It's not touching. The second one only kicks in if that guy might malfunction, and it's not supposed to malfunction. If I have a short circuit right in this area here, this little boy is not rated for it. it, it this means the short circuit is actually right in here. Can you guys see that? That's not within the jurisdiction of the C. It's within the jurisdiction of the B. So bam, 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 oops, now that will take care of it. If I have a short circuit right in here, this short circuit, guys, is within the jurisdiction of the A, which means we are right in here, within the jurisdiction of the A. Everybody can see that? And then we keep going, 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 bam, this will trip. We, we coordinate within the jurisdiction of that circuit breaker. Like some of you will say, Chad, this, if I have short circuit, this guy will trip because this is not, this guy doesn't exist here. Yeah, doesn't exist because that guy, this area here is not within its jurisdiction. He's only, that little boy, that little guy here is only responsible for what's to the left of it. Can you guys see that? This guy is only responsible for what's underneath it and to the left of it. That's it. And the same thing for this guy is responsible for what's underneath it and what's to the left of it, but we need to do the coordination. What's up, bud? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chad. Okay. No, I really wanted to come and get a pack of sugar. I don't want to You go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Go from the other side. I've seen a lot of thieves in my life. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it wasn't me, uh, Chad. Now we know who's stealing our sugar. <laughs> no, no, I didn't ask you for it. And yesterday, you got so much going on, you forgot. No, I told you. To, I told you. I'm just no. kidding here, man. <laughs> Okay, any question guys about the fully coordinated system? Fully coordinated? Anytime, bud. I'm just kidding. Sorry, Chad. No problem, Sorry. anytime. Any question guys about fully coordinated? That's what you're going to be doing with us for the 4000 amp switch here. Very easy. If you guys understand, if they don't touch, they are fully coordinated. That's all. Any question? and the jurisdiction of each circuit breaker. So that's basically that. Here's another fully coordinated system, guys, between a fuse and a circuit breaker. Everybody can see that they're fully coordinated, right? Can you guys see that? Are they touching? Ask yourself, are they touching each other? No. I want you to look at these. This is really interesting. I want you guys, if you understand this one, you guarantee you, you will be a good young fellow one day. Uh, you make yourself a good, good career. Here's my curve number one. I'm just coloring it. And here's my curve number two, my fuse. Here's my fuse going all the way up and coming down. Just to give you an idea. Oh, no. Now on this side, okay, coming down from here. Okay, now what you guys are looking at, you're looking at the short circuit coordination between the fuse and the circuit breaker. Uh, everybody can see that? Don't look at the other curves. Ignore the other curves. Can you guys see, are these coordinated? That's a short circuit coordination. That's coordination within the short circuit, for the short circuit. So what you're looking at right now is two curves. <laughs> Uh, I want to say the green, green and red. This is short circuit coordination. Okay, now stay with Chad for a second here before I get too excited. I want you guys to look at the second one, the black. Can you guys see that black here? What the heck is that? These two black ones. The, the black, black curves are ground call coordination. Ground fault coordination. That's it. So are the black crossing the red and the green? Yes. Do I care? No. Because they're looking at two different things, guys. The two black, uh, the two black uh, curves, they're looking at the ground fault only. They're focusing at the ground fault. The green and the red are looking at the short circuit. So 
bread, if you look at the, the crossing right here, do I care that crossing the red? No, because the two plants are coordinating with each other and the red and the green are coordinating with each other. We, we don't need to coordinate the blacks with the red and the blacks with the green. You don't need to do that. The ground fault always coordinates with the ground fault. The short circuit coordinates with the short circuit. So if you guys put this in, in your mind, it will help you a lot. Because a lot of people look at these two and say, well, they're not coordinating each other, they're crossing, right? Yeah, but only look, the two, the green and the red are for, fully coordinated for short circuit. So if I have a short circuit anywhere in the system, the green and the red between both of them will handle it. If I have a ground fault, if I have a ground, what's a ground fault? You grab phase A to the ground. The only one is going to handle it as that little curve first, which is nested underneath the other curve. So if it can't handle it, um, then the, the second curve, which is B, D basically. So have, this is my D and my B. These are my ground fault, D and B, fully coordinated. And as you guys know, the A and C, A and C is the short circuit, short circuit. Everybody can see that? Everybody can see that? Any question is about coordinating ground faults? As you can see, the two black curves, or coordinating the the colored mm -hmm. curves with the, um, which is the short circuit. When do I need the ground fault, though? Do you guys remember what that criteria to require this? Only anything higher than a hundred, a thousand amp or higher at 480, 277. 281, 20? No, not required. 281, 20? Not required. 240, 120? Not required. Regardless of the amps, only 480, 277 and uh, 1,000 amp or higher. Any question guys about this? I want you guys to look at the ground fault. This ground fault is set, set uh, to pick up at 2,000 amps, at 200 amps. This guy is set up to pick up at four, uh, 400 amps in this, in this area. Uh, but the key point, the reason why we made the coordination is really not to pick up as much as that set. This is, can set 0.5, this is 0.1. So Spencer, that's the lower curve here is five times faster than the upper curve. Five times faster, meaning he's gonna trip five times before that guy wakes up. Um, or meaning he's gonna see it and trip within 5.1 of a second. The other guy's gonna sit, watch, count basically to 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. If, if that guy doesn't trip, it will trip. Any question, my friends, coordinating ground fold and short circuit? Ground fold, like as I said, this guy is taking you to the next level, whoever wants to go there, basically. There are people at Mishad Pool and everywhere, all what they do, guys, is play with these curves when you go there. All what they do is just do, whenever they have a hospital, they specialize in short circuit and coordination, and all what they do, they don't touch rabbit or care, they just do the coordination. And when you're done, what, what's my product, Brad? What do I do when I'm done? Your product will be a, a list, basically of uh, uh, an 11 by 17 sheet that's full of sitting for the electrician to give them. Here's circuit record number 15, here's uh, five sitting for it. Circuit record number 25, uh, another five sittings for it. So you have a sheet full of all the sittings, the adjustable sittings for the circuit breakers. Give them to the electrician, the electrician with a screwdriver, they go and adjust them. That's basically the product, what you give to the customers when you do that. Any, any project, guys, that's 1,000 amps or higher, or even must, if you have 1,000 amps or higher, you must do an overcome coordination. I mean, you, you're going you're gonna to be screwed up if you don't. 1,000 amp project, 1,000 amp or higher, you do, a, you do this co coordination. You run the short circuit, you do the coordination. A lot of engineering firms, guys, they do them for every project, but a must, a thousand amp or more. Any question, my friends? The ground fault, the short circuit. That's all I have for you for now. Any question about this, guys? Please, please pay attention to this chapter, especially, guys, when we go next week into the overcome tissue coordination short circuit. It really helps you understand the software.
I will, this is PDF'd and it will be on the network too. So please remember long time pickup, short time pickup, instantaneous, um, and delay long time and short time. These are terminology that the industry uses all the time. 